Hey everybody, we are teaching Sculptor VR, and this particular lesson is all about the Snapping Voxel Box, a wonderful name for a very easy to use tool. This is the last of the square tools, and it's actually directly related to our stretchable box. If you remember from stretchable, stretchable box, you pull the trigger at a starting point, and it draws a box, and when you let go, it fills in that box. The snapping voxel box works exactly the same way. So when you're using it, not only do you do the same action of click, trigger to hold, move it, let go. So it works the same way, but there are a few important differences and why you would use one instead of the other. So with the round, with the stretchable box, however you hold your controller, you're drawing a box based on the angle your hand is at. So if you're not perfectly straight, your box won't be perfectly straight. The stretchable is also got rounded corners of the box itself. If we switch to the stretchable box, you can see how my controller is rounded. And if I'm at an angle when I stretch, then my box is also at an angle when I stretch. But if I go for my wonderful new, there we go, my wonderful vox snapping voxel box, one thing you'll notice is no matter how I move my controller, this box is always up and down, left and right, perfectly angled to my environment. If I grab the environment and rotate the environment, you can see how the box stays in relation to how I roll the environment. Let me shrink it down so you can see my actual environment here. And as I angle the environment, this stretchable box always stays straight up and down relative to the sculpture itself. So I don't have to worry about having my hand line up perfectly. The, the uh, snappable voxel box is always going to be lined up perfectly. So one thing it's got is always precise aim. This is nice if we're going to make a cityscape or something like that. I don't have to worry about the buildings being at slightly different angles. This is a tool that can carve as well as create. So you'll notice when I'm in carve mode, I've got the wireframe of the box. And again, it's going to stay up and down, left and right, perfectly symmetrical, perfectly in line with the actual sculpture itself. The other thing you'll notice is it does have nice sharp edges, sharp corners, that type of thing. Whoops, I got out of my box. There we go. Nice sharp corners and edges. Whereas the other stretchable box tool is rounded. So if I'm going to stay, I'm going to create a cityscape here. Let's get a nice plane going here. Keep it roughly relative. I'm going to grab some gray in a nice flat so I can make a perfectly symmetrical and in line. Let's keep within our zone here. There we go, getting some boxes forming. And as you can see, they're all relative to each other. Now I'm going to go in and turn it to carve mode. That's your top thumb button. Now I can start slicing in streets and alleyways and making this a regular precise city. And as you can see, I don't have to worry too much about getting things lining up perfectly. We'll make some things sliced off at the top. We'll make some... Adding on, get some skyscrapers in here. And they're always going to be perfectly up and down, left and right relationship to each other.
This is the snapping voxel box to give us nice, precise shapes, rectangular shapes, without having to have precise aim ourselves. I can now go in with different colors, different materials, and keep everything in perfectly aligned. So when I add the shiny things, I don't have to worry about making sure they line up perfectly, because the system will automatically have them line up perfectly. No matter how I move my hands, they're always going to stay in nice relation to each other. And now you can see I've got a city going just from this. Nice reflective materials, that type of thing. Snapping voxel box. Both create and carve, sharp corners. Now some things do happen interesting if we get into a little bit of interaction here. I'm going to give myself a blank wall. If I go in with carve, most of the edges are nice and sharp, but there are some edges in here, if you look carefully, you can see are slightly beveled, slightly angled. I'm going to get some more lines going here, some more edges carved in, and we'll see if we can get some of these effects to happen. So now you can see, even though I made it with a sharp, flat edge, we do have a little bit of beveling, angling in the corners. If this is something you don't want, you may have to go in and shave it down or build it back up. We'll go back into build mode and get it perfectly lined up and just build just a little bit more. And you'll notice we're getting a little bit of interference between our shapes here. There we go. But now again, you can see that beveling, that angling. So as you work with this, it is going to be affected by the pieces you work with. Now this angling, this straight up and down, is dependent on the layer you're working with. So if I've got my city here, and I add another layer, and I unlock that layer, now in this new layer, as long as they both line up, these pieces line up. Since I have unlocked this as a separate layer, I can grab it and move it. Now when I draw my new boxes, this new orientation, this angle, is the angle the boxes are being created at. So you can use your layers if you want some dynamic directions and different angles for different pieces. So now I've got a couple different pieces. Now I go back to the main layer and move everything together. There we go. Snapping voxel box, the last of the square shaped tools that really gives you precise controls, especially if you're doing industrial, cityscape, anything you want to be perfectly rectangular in line with your layer. That's what this tool is all about. I can't use it to write my subscribe message because it's not going to line up perfectly made of boxes. So I'm going to switch back to my normal sphere tool. In fact, we're going to do it as graffiti. I'm going to get a nice big flat wall here and switch to my paintbrush. And let's paint this in a different color. There we go. So thanks for joining us. I'm going to do this with my back to you. Sorry, but that's because I need to be able to see what I'm writing here. And I'm going to run out of room, but I'm just going to keep on painting. Because in Sculptor, you can spray paint on different materials. There we go. And I forgot the letter C. There we go. Subscribe. Slightly misspelled, but you get the idea. Thanks for joining us this time on Teaching Sculptor VR. We do this every week on both Twitch TV as well as archived here on YouTube. Let us know in the comments if there are tools or particular classes you would like to learn more about, and we'll try to incorporate them. Please apologize for my spelling for today, but that's all. Thanks for joining us. Have fun with your Sculptor VR.